Okay, so in this problem, we're told A, calculate the magnitude of the force Fm required of the deltoid muscle to hold up the outstretched arm shown in the figure. The total mass of the arm is 3.3 kilograms. B, calculate the magnitude of the force Fj exerted by the shoulder joint on the upper arm in the angle to the horizontal at which it acts. So we have a bunch of things here, right? So I went ahead and redrew the arm, but I think in this way, it's going to be much easier to understand uh, because we're just basically getting rid of all the fluff. So we have a couple of things. First, we have uh, the mass of the arm, right? This is at the CG, right? And we know there's going to be a force due to gravity at the CG pulling it downwards, right? So that's equal to MG. We have the, for, uh, the force of the shoulder joint, and they show us it's going to be pointing this way, right? And that's labeled FJ, and it's going to be at this point right here. And then we also have the force FM, right? And this is the deltoid muscle in order to actually hold it up. So we know this is going to be 15 degrees right here relative to basically this line, which is in line with all of the forces. So we know all this information. We're also given the distances of FM, uh, which is 12 centimeters from the point or the shoulder joint, and then 24 centimeters away MG is right from the shoulder joint. And so let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to solve this. So for A, uh, the way I know, if I want to solve for FM here, what I can do is sum the torque about a point, right? In this case, I'm going to choose FJ. Uh, and if I sum the torque about this point, uh, it's going to allow me to eliminate the force from this problem and just leave me with that one unknown to solve. And you'll see how it works in a second. But essentially, the way it works is we know torque equals force times distance times the sine of theta. Okay, this is the formula. And if I sum all the torques, which basically just means add them up, I know they're going to be equal to zero, right? In this problem, since it's a static problem, they're not moving. So all the torque must be equal to zero since there, it's no, there's no uh, angular acceleration. Um, and so since that's the case, I can choose this point FJ. And if I sum the torque at this point, FJ is going to be eliminated from the equation, right? Because if I add the torque due to FJ at that point, torque equals force, right? Which would be FJ times the distance. But if it's right on top of it, Right, notice FJ is right on top of the shoulder joint, and if I sum it at that point, uh, the distance is zero, meaning the torque due to FJ on that point is zero. So it basically eliminates it from the equation, uh, leaving us just to be able to solve for FM, which is what they want here. So uh, that's how we're going to do it. So I know the sum of the torque is going to be equal to zero. Zero equals, and then I'm just going to sum up the torque for these two, right? Since this one is going to be eliminated, we don't actually care about it. So FM and MG, I'm going to sum up the torque. So we have the torque due to mg and the torque due to fm. Now keep in mind that the torque due to mg uh, is going to be po uh, is going to be positive. Sorry about that. And the way this works is if the if the force causes it to go rotate around the point, right? In this case, is the point of rotation where we're summing the torque. If it causes it to go in a clockwise direction, right, which mg is doing because it would pull it this way and around then we know that it's positive. We label the torque positive. But look at FM. If, M, if FM acts, it's going to cause it to go like this, which is counterclockwise. Therefore, if it goes counterclockwise, uh, right, the force around the point of rotation, then we call it negative. Okay? So we're going to minus that uh, since this one goes counter. And then we're going to just solve for the torques about the point. So as I said before, torque equals force. In this case, the force is mg. So we know that. Uh, and then what's the distance? So we basically do the perpendicular distance, or just the distance from the force. So this would be the distance away, right? And this distance is 24 centimeters. So they give us that information. I'm going to convert it into meters, so it would just be 0.24 meters. And then sine of theta is the angle, right? So theta is the angle between the force, the direction the force acts, and the lever arm. So this is the lever arm, right? It's our arm. And then the force is going to act straight down. Therefore, the angle between them here is a, is a right angle, and it's 90 degrees, okay? Uh, and so you should know that the sine of 90, right, since our theta angle is 90, is just 1. So we can actually ignore it in this case. So if it's perpendicular, right, like this, you actually don't need to have the sine of theta. So now we have to do the torque due to FM. Now, we know the force in this case is just FM, right? We don't know what it is, but that's what we're solving for. So that's our force. Now, what is the distance away? So we see the distance right relative to the line of the lever arm right here is uh, 12 centimeters there so 0 0.12 is the distance but now this one actually is going to have an angle so uh, we know the angle right the force is pointing this way 
and the lever arm is right here. And they actually get, make it easy because they just tell us the angle here. It's going to be 15 degrees, right? Between here, the lever arm and the force, 15 degrees. So our theta in this case, 15 degrees, okay? And now we actually just have everything, so it's a matter of plugging it in. So uh, I'm going to move FM to the other side here, uh, just so it, to make it easier to solve, right? So I'm just moving this. So TMG equals TFM. So plugging our values in. I know the mass, right? M in this case was just the mass of the arm, right? Because uh, the total mass of the arm is 3.3. .3, so they tell us that times 9.8, multiplying it by 0.24. Then we're dividing by, or sorry, we're setting this equal to FM 0.12 sine of 15. Dividing both sides by 0.12 sine of 15. That'll cancel. And now we have FM by itself, right? So FM is going to be equal to 3.3 .3 times 9.8 times 0.24 times 0.12 times the sine of 15. So we just have the mass, the acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant. We have the distance from uh, MG to the point of rotation. Uh, 0.12 is the distance from FM to the point of rotation. And then this is just the angle right between FM and the lever arm. So 3.3 .3 times 9.8 times 0.24 divided by 0.12 times the sine of 15. And so when you go ahead and do this, you're going to get FM is equal to 249.90. Uh, uh, so keep in mind, this is going to be Newton's, obviously. You can round however you'd like. You can say 250. I'll just leave it like this, though. So 249.9 Newtons. That's your FM uh, or your answer to A. So we've got A now. Let's go ahead and focus on B. So I'll do B up here. So for B, what they want us to find is calculate the magnitude of force FJ exerted by the shoulder joint on the upper arm and the angle to the horizontal at which it acts. So we're going to want to find basically what, F, uh, what FJ is and that angle theta. Uh, the way we're going to do it, okay, is I know generally if they want me to find an angle, I'm going to have to find the components, right? Because we we're going to use the formula, the arc tangent equals y over x to find the angle theta to the horizontal. So that's what we're going to want to solve for. So I know I'm going to need the uh, x and y components of fj. And I know I can do that by summing the forces in the x and the y, right? We can find the, uh, the y component of fj, summing the forces in the y, right? Since it's the only force remaining in this uh, free body diagram here. So that's why we're going to do that. So we're going to do both directions. I'm going to start with the sum of the forces in the x. So I know the sum of the forces in the x equals 0. It equals 0 since we're in static equilibrium. OK? Uh, and then, yeah, so 0 equals uh, what are our x components? So mg obviously is only in the y, so we can ignore that. There's only going to be an x component for fj and fm. So the x component of fj is what we're looking for. So fj of x, I'll just say, uh, if it goes to the right also, I'll call it positive. If it goes to the left, I'll call it negative. So fj of x is positive, uh, fm x is going to be negative. All right now, what is the x component of fm? Well, if I look at this like a triangle, okay, so imagine this right here is our triangle, and I want, let me actually just redraw this with a different color. So imagine this is the triangle. It's not going to be exact, but it should be good. This is 15 degrees, obviously. Our uh, hypotenuse is F fm. And we're going to need the x and y components for this to solve. Uh, for Well, for the y part, we'll need the y, but now we're just dealing with the x. If I want the x component, right, which is this way, uh, I can use trig. So I know the cosine of an angle, in this case 15 degrees, right, is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. That's what cosine is. So the adjacent side is our x. Our hypotenuse is our fm. If I multiply both sides by fm, uh, that'll just give us our x component. So x in this case equals fm cosine of 15. So I'm actually going to show you how to find the y2 since uh, you're not going to need it right now, but you'll need it in the problem a little bit later. So let's do that. So we're going to use sine for this one. So sine of 15, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side of the angle is y. The hypotenuse is fm. You would multiply both sides, right? And that'll give you y equals fm sine of 15. So we have our x and y components now. So fm 
sine of 15. Uh, and yeah, so now we've got that. Now, uh, let me go back to this color. There we go. And so now I got to write the X component of my uh, FM force, right? Which was FM cosine of 15. So we have minus FM cosine of 15. The reason it's negative is because it's pointing in the neg negative direction here, right? It goes this way since FM is pointing to the left. Um, and yeah, so basically this tells us, right, which should be pretty intuitive, that FJX is equal to FM cosine of 15, right? And since these are the two forces in the X, obviously they have to be equal to each other, uh, just opposite direction, because if it wasn't, it would be moving, right? So hopefully that makes sense. So your X or your FJX is 249.9 cosine of 15. Let's go ahead and plug that in now. Two, I'm going to use the exact value too, times the cosine of 15. So 241.39. 241.39. We'll just say, uh, keep in mind this is Newton's. Now let's find the Y one. So I know the sum of the forces in the Y equals zero. Zero equals. Now what forces in the Y? So obviously all of these forces have a Y component. For gravity, it's just equal to the gravity, right? So if it goes down, I'll call it negative. So minus mg, that's that one deal with. Uh, the y component of our fm is right here, fm sine of 15. Uh, we know it points upwards, right? Because this one goes upwards. So it's plus fm, plus fm sine of 15. Uh, and then we have minus, this would be minus fj of y. So we have that. Uh, and then now what we want to do is just solve for fj of y since it's our only thing unknown. fj of y equals mg, or sorry, I'm moving this to the other side. So minus mg plus fm sine of 15. Now it's just a matter of plugging in. So minus 3.3 .3 times 9.8, right? Because m is just the mass of the arm. Plus fm, which was 249.9 times the sine of 15. Let's go ahead and plug this in. So... You have minus 3.3 .3 .3 times 9.8 plus 249.9 times the sine of 15. And for this, you're going to get 32.34, we'll say. 32.34 newtons. Now we have each component. And if we want to find the magnitude, uh, it's just a simple formula, right? So we know the magnitude of a force, uh, right? We'll call it Fj, right? Since that's our magnitude, is the square root of the x component squared and the y component squared. So fj of x squared plus fj of y squared. Right, kind of just like Pythagorean theorem. So we have 241.39 squared plus 32.34 squared. So let me plug this in. So square root that or, and then, yep. And we will get a value equal to fj is equal to 243.54 so you can round how you'd like i'm gonna say 244 newtons so this is your f of j 244 newtons that is that uh, right so we got our magnitude or yeah the magnitude we also want to find the angle to the horizontal at which it acts so as i said before the way we do that is with this formula the arc tangent of y over x so the arc tangent of y, which is uh, 32.34 divided by 241.39. So I'm going to do the arc tangent of this 32.34 divided by 241.39. And for this, you're going to get 7.63, uh, we'll just say 7.63 degrees. Keep in mind, this is the angle to the horizontal, so uh, we know it's going to be this angle right here. So whatever that theta is, it should make sense that it's really small. The reason that is, is our x component is significantly greater than our y. So if that's the case, it's really not going down much in the y for how far it goes in the x. So if this distance is much longer than this, obviously the angle is going to be extremely small. Uh, but yeah, so your answers uh, are right here. So magnitude and then the angle to the horizontal 
right? Because that's what they want us to find. Let me just look again. Yeah, find FJ exerted and the angle to the horizontal. Yeah, so 7.63 degrees and 244 newtons. Um, and uh, yeah, so these are your answers to B. Uh, your answer to A was right here, FM. And just a quick rundown of how we did this problem. Uh, right, so just redrawing it makes it a lot easier. I knew if I sum the torque at the shoulder joint, I could just solve for the force FM since it would eliminate it, right, since the distance from that point is zero or FJ's distance, uh, and then I just solve for FM. So that was pretty easy. And then we would just sum the forces in the X and the Y to solve for the Y and X components of FJ, combine them for the magnitude, and then just use this formula for the angle. And uh, yeah, so these are gonna go ahead and be your answers. And hopefully you found this video useful.